Hello, school family. Happy, happy Sunday and a very happy Valentine's Day to those who celebrate. Um, I hope today in one capacity or another you are showered with love and are having an awesome day. Um, so before we get into our work of the week, let's just talk about some housekeeping things. Um, tomorrow schools are closed for President's Day, so there will be no instruction tomorrow. It also shouldn't be treated as an asynchronous day. It is just a complete day off. Um, so use this time to rest, recharge. Hopefully you get some time off from work too um, and can enjoy the day with our children. Um, so with that being said, Monday being closed tomorrow, Wednesday becomes a live instruction day. So normally we would have live instruction Monday, Tuesday, asynchronous Wednesday, live instruction Thursday, Friday. So instead, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday will all be live instruction days. And for special on Wednesday, it will be Monday special. So on Wednesday, our students will have art in the afternoon. Um, so we're going to be pushing straight through for those four days. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and jump into this work of the week. So for shared reading this week, our big um, question or our essential question we call it is, what do you do in bad weather? So for the next couple books, we're going to be talking about how you stay safe in bad weather. What does bad weather look like? And through all the different texts we are reading, we're going to be building that brain file about different types of weather and what to do if bad weather does come. Um, so on Tuesday, I'm going to be thrown off this whole time. I keep wanting to say Monday. On Tuesday, we're going to be reading a book called Rain. It's one of my favorite texts that we have in our curriculum. The illustrations are super rich. It is a fictional text. And on um, Tuesday, we're going to be doing our objective as making predictions. So getting our students to examine what's happening on the page they're currently on and thinking about what's going to happen next. And what I like about this is the author makes the, the text and the illustrations predictable for what may be occurring in the next section. Um, so that'll be on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we're going to do rain again, and it will be character setting and major events. And my friends, we know we've been practicing that the characters are the people or the animals or the creatures or the make-believe um, animals or creatures in a book. Um, and that setting is just where they are. We've also been discussing that setting can also be time. And we are definitely working towards mastery at explaining both of those things. And then major event go right alongside with being able to pull out those important pieces of information that happen at the beginning, that happen in the middle, and that happen at the end. So all those pieces coming together to make that story make sense. So that's Tuesday, Wednesday. On Thursday, we're going to read a fictional text called Frog and Locust. And this also has an um, overarching um, objective of talking about the different types of weather. And then on Friday, we will read a book called Cloud Watch. And this one um, is an informational text that's going to give us um, different types of information about when we are seeing the clouds in the sky and what is happening, that the clues that rain may be coming or a storm may be coming. Okay, so that's for shared reading this week. Um, moving on to phonics, we have two letters we're going to do this week. One is a vowel. It's that letter U that goes uh, 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 or sometimes we put our hand on our belly like we have a belly ache. uh, uh, uh. Remember, like we talked about before, vowels are always a little bit trickier because we talk about their short sound, so the one that says uh, uh, and we talk about the long sound, the one that says its name. If we were doing you, we would say you. So when we practice vowels, we like to put these in the middle of words because we stress and teach our students all the time that every word must have a vowel. If you think about every word in our vocabulary, every word has a vowel in it. So this is um, really a great time for us to practice that blending where they're taking the consonant with the vowel in the middle and drawing that sound out to connect it to the last sound to be able to blend the word. Some of my friends are really making excellent progress with this, and some of my friends were still working on those letter sounds, and I'm starting to see some really great gains with that as well. So that makes me very happy. So Tuesday, Wednesday will both be short U, uh, uh, uh. And then on Thursday, Friday, we're going to work on X and X says X, X, X. So we are going to continue our practice um, with our letters. We really are doing such a great job. We're also going to do our sight words and they are up this week and but. Not the but like your hiney, but like I was going to the store, but I left my wallet at home. So B-U-T. So for anybody out there that was feeling a little tricked, we always have a, a good laugh together on the computer when we do that word. Um, because I think our friends think we're talking about the other kind of butt. So not that kind of butt, B-U-T butt. 
Okay, so that's our sight words for this week. Um, speaking with phonics, I am encouraging our friends to start writing more as we are doing our phonics work. So not just identifying the sound, but also identifying um, the letters that come at the beginning of that word and the end of that word. And I'm encouraging them to spell it the kid way. So as adults, we automatically know how to spell things because when we were in kindergarten and were brought up in school, we learned all these skills as well. So if your student is practicing with the word and you find that you're you're wanting to tell them, oh, but that word has another sound in it and it's, you don't hear it in there. I want you to take a step back and let them write it the kid way. So for example, and Miss Trudy, if you're watching, I'm going to use our example from when um, we were on the computer together this week. If the word was leaf and our students are thinking about what they've learned so far about letters, l e f, they would write that l e F, because they're listening for the sounds and they're using what they know. So, L, L, E, E, F, F is F. So, I would see L, E, F. And that is great developmentally. Now, some of my friends kind of have like a picture memory where they might be able to spell it correctly. But for the majority, they wouldn't know to put that A in there because we have not learned about vowel teams yet. So try and fight the urge to have them spell it the adult way because then that's kind of undoing the practice that we're doing and telling them to listen to the sound they hear to be able to figure out words. Same thing when they're reading. You're going to come up on words where they're not going to be able to sound them out. So with those, definitely help them to work through and say, this word might have a special rule and that's why it's tricky. But in order to kind of build on their abilities, the further along they go, end of kindergarten into first grade, we start learning more of those grammatical rules. But as of right now, we're just mastering getting those sounds and learning how to blend. So let them do that. We call it ear spelling or kid writing. And to us as adults, it would be phonetic spelling. Okay, so fight the urge moms and dads to try to make them spell it the adult way. And we will continue to work on that together. Okay, so that's for phonics. Moving on to math. Um, this week, we're going to continue with shapes kind of silly. Tuesday, we're doing a game called Sort Shapes by Size and Corners. And then we're going to do a game on um, Wednesday called Goodbye Shapes. But we're not saying goodbye to shapes just yet because we still have two other activities we're doing this week with those. So Wednesday will be Goodbye Shapes. And then on Thursday, we're going to do Geo Board Shapes. Now, if we were at school... Geo boards are those boards that have all, I think it's a 10 by 10 of the little pegs that are on it. And they take the rubber bands and they put them around. Bridges has made a digital version of this. So we're going to get to do some exploring with creating shapes using the digital geo board. And then on Friday, we have a game called Shapes and More Shapes. So our shape study continues. We've been doing a fabulous job with this so far. They're starting to get really good about talking about the sides and the corners and the different attributes of shapes. Okay, so I think that is everything for the week. I feel like I was going at a, a rapid speed. I had so much to say. Um, just another side note. So as I'm sure you're already aware from the calls we received from Baltimore County, from the emails that you've been receiving, um, schools are in the process of getting ready to reopen in person. So starting the 22nd, February 22nd, I will be returning to the building and I will be teaching that week virtually um, to try and gear up and get ready for when we are moving in for when hybrid instruction begins. Some families have elected to send students back and for now it's a part-time schedule, only two days a week. And other parents have chosen um, to go the virtual route and stay virtual for everything. Whatever you choose is the best option for your student. You know your family best. You know your needs best. Um, and whatever you are choosing, of course, I am happy and I support that. So as we get closer to um, doing that blended instruction where I'm going to have some of my students in person and some of my students fully virtual, we are going to have an in-depth discussion about what our schedule is going to look like. It's going to change. Um, I think in a perfect world, we could just keep everything the same. But now that we are making these moves toward reopening and trying to get our students back in school, the schedule is going to flip-flop a little bit because I am going to be teaching our in-person students and our students that are staying virtual simultaneously for part of the day. So please stay tuned for that. I am going to be sending 
as I get information, sending that out to you as well when I am able to. Um, so please make sure you're checking your emails diligently and just keeping an eye out so that nobody is confused. We are all in this together. We have rolled with the punches leading up to now, um, and I know that we're going to continue to do that. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out, um, and we can always go through and figure out what needs to be done, okay? So I think that is everything. I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their Valentine's Day. Give somebody um, in your family that you love a big squeeze and enjoy your day off tomorrow. I will see you Tuesday at 9 a.m. Mwah.